Okay, welcome to the introduction to proportional reasoning. If you're in my class, we're in chapter 8, and you may have your study guide out. If not, welcome to a lesson on proportional reasoning and how we can think about comparing rates um, <clears throat> in order to find out what the best deal is or who's faster. All those types of things uh, are going to be looked at in this particular section. Uh, so I'm going to introduce it with a particular problem and how we can reason about it. Uh, if you like saving money, this may be a problem for you. Uh, it says, Mr. Martins is comparing the price of jelly beans at Costco and Superstore. So I want to know which is cheaper. At Costco, jelly beans cost $7.50 for 1.2 kilograms. At Superstore, jelly beans cost $0.95 cents for 150 grams. So Costco s sells a lot more and Superstore sells less. Uh, but my goal is to find out which store, Costco or Superstore, offers the better deal. So in order to do this, what I need to do is somehow make these units similar because $7.50 per 1.2 kilograms at Costco in red here is very different types of units than 95 cents per 150 grams. So if you'd like to try this on your own and pause this, the first thing that I'll tell you is that one kilogram, this will be useful for you, is equivalent to 1,000 grams. That's going to be useful for you. So you may want to pause this and try it on your own. Okay, uh, if you're not, or if you've already finished this and want to look at it, I'm going to show you one or two methods to solving this particular problem. Uh, one method is to put these into the same units. Actually, that's uh, the method that you should always generally start with. Uh, we know that there's 100 cents in a dollar, so if I wanted to change $7.50 into cents at 750 cents per 1.2 kilograms. So my goal here is that what I'm what I've done is I've made in the in the red and the green, I've made them both into cent units, but one is in grams, that's superstore, and the other is in kilograms. So if I multiply the kilograms by a thousand, that will give me grams. So we know at Costco, it's 750 cents for 1,200 grams. The issue right now is that this is still hard to compare because this is a different amount of weight. At Costco, it's 1,200 grams, and at superstore, it's 150 grams. One method of comparing rates is something called unit rates. We have to have the second rate or unit equivalent numerically in order to compare these. 150 grams is very different than 1,200 grams. So one method of comparing these that's quite useful usually is to find out the cost or to find out <clears throat> how much any rate is with the second unit being one. That's a unit rate. <clears throat> so in order to do that, uh, for Costco, since it's 1,200 grams, if I divided the cost by 1,200 and the weight by 1,200, I get the, the cost per one gram. So if I do 750 cents divided by 1,200, that will give me 0 0.625 cents. So the cost of one gram at Costco is 0 0.625 cents. For Superstore, if I want to find the cost of one gram, I would divide the weight by 150 and the cost by 150, and that will give me the price per one gram. And if I divide 95 by 150 grams, that gives me the unit rate of 0 0.633 cents per gram. So the last thing, now that we have the similar units, cents and grams, and similar numerical value for the second unit, that's per one gram and per one gram, we can compare them. Ask yourself in red, would I rather pay 0 0.625 cents per one gram, or in green, 0 0.633 cents per one gram? And that answer is that Costco is cheaper. This is one of many methods, but it's often useful. Uh, let me show you a second method that may work for some of you better. Um, <clears throat> if we make these into the same units again, that's where we should generally start is that $7.50 is 750 cents and that 1.2 kilograms is 1200 grams. So at some point in time get similar units. You could also convert cents into dollars and grams into kilograms. doesn't matter as long as in each particular the two things you're comparing you have the same units. I'm using cents and grams. So another method of doing this is instead of using a unit rate is to somehow make these the same weight. So I might want to figure out how many times 150 grams goes into 1,200 grams. And the way I would do that is divide. So 1,200 divided by 150 is 8 times. So what that means is if I multiply 150 grams by 8, I will get 1,200 grams. So if I multiply the cost by 8, I will get the cost at Superstore for every 1,200 grams, which is still useful. And 95 times 8 is 760. So at Costco, uh, the price in red 
is 750 cents per 1200 grams, and at Superstore, the price in green is 760 cents for the same amount of weight. So the cheaper is still Costco. So here's some key ideas that we have investigated so far, and you may want to pause this and try it copying this down. We'll do one more problem in this particular lesson. Um, a rate is a comparison of two units and can be expressed as a fraction. So as you've seen, I've generally set up uh, rates as fractions. For Costco and Superstore, I used dollars per kilogram or cents per gram. Uh, that's useful. Uh, other examples that I have here are kilometers per hour or dollars per liter or meters per second or dollars per hour. Um, in general, if money is a unit, it comes first. You generally would have dollars per gram and not grams per dollar. However, that may be useful. But generally, if money is a unit, we like it to come first. Uh, also, if time is a unit, it tends to come last. We're used to seeing time as the second unit in particular different things, like kilometers per hour or meters per second. Uh, time, like hours and seconds, generally comes last if it's one of the units. To compare rates, here's the, two th the few things that we might want to do. They must have the same units, so we made them both into cents and grams in this previous part. And the second term must be numerically equal. So in one case, we made the second term 1,200 grams, numerically equal. Or in this other case, we made them equal to 1 gram, which is numerically equal. <clears throat> So, thirdly, a unit rate is a rate where the second term is numerically equal to 1. It's generally a useful thing to make these into unit rates. So how much is it per 1 gram? How much is it per 1 hour? How much does it cost per liter, per 1 liter? That's a unit rate. Uh, here's some conversions that are going to be helpful for you. You can copy these down. I'll really quickly talk about them before we get into the next example. 1 kilogram is 1,000 grams. <clears throat> 1 kilogram is also 2.2 pounds. One kilometer is 1,000 meters. One meter is 100 centimeters. One mile is 1.6 kilometers. One liter is 1,000 milliliters. One gallon is equivalent to 3.79 liters. One foot has 12 inches. One hour has 60 minutes. And one minute has 60 seconds. So that may be useful in <clears throat> future problems. So uh, let's look at a second example, and we'll stop after that in this particular lesson. We're going to compare prices again. It says Natasha can buy 12 kilograms of turkey from her local butcher for $42.89. So I put the dollars first. So it's $42.89, you can see in the first black part here, per 12 kilograms at the butcher. The local supermarket, however, has turkeys advertised in its weekly flyer for $1.49 per pound. So supermarket is $1.49 per pound, which is already a unit rate. So maybe I'm going to leave this like this. This is my thinking. I know the unit rate at the supermarket. Which store has the lower price? At this moment, we don't know. They're both in dollars, but one is in kilogram units, the other in pound units, and they're different numerically. So what I'm first going to do is convert these kilograms in, for the butcher in black here into pounds. And if we look here, kilograms into pounds, <clears throat> if you're going from one to the other particular unit, you're going to multiply. So kilograms to pounds, if I'm going this way, I'm always going to be multiplying. And if I'm going the other way, I'm going to be dividing. So since I'm going from, highlighted in yellow, kilograms to pounds, I'm going to be multiplying by 2.2. So if I times this by 2.2, I'm going to get the pounds. So this is going to be $42.89 per 26.4 pounds. And we're getting closer. However, we have different numeric units for the second particular unit. Uh, this is a cost per 26.4 pounds. This is a cost per one pound. So if I take the butcher and want to find the cost per one pound, I would divide these pounds by 26.4, which also means I would divide the cost by 26.4. And that would give me the cost per one pound. So I'm going to take $42.89, so 42.89, divide it by 26.4 pounds, and that's $1.62 per pound. So if we look at these two units, they're now in the same units, and the second unit is numerically equivalent. Now ask yourself, which one would you rather buy from? Would you rather pay $1.62 per pound or $1.49 per pound? I would rather pay less. So here is the cheaper better deal.